listening to We All Wear It Differently, a podcast for early career psychologists. Your window into the world of the psychology profession. And now your host, Amy Feldman. Hi. And thank you for the introduction, Amy. Uh, it's really exciting to be here today talking at WordCamp Boston. This is my first WordCamp and my first time to Boston, and this is an amazing city, so it's really awesome to be here learning about your history and getting the opportunity to speak about something that I'm really passionate about, which is podcasting with WordPress. So just to get started, who here listens to podcasts? Show of hands. Awesome. Cool. So what kinds of things are people listening to at the moment? Just yell them out. NPR. Huh? NPR. NPR. NPR stands for? Oh, yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. <laughs> I listened to that too, I just wasn't familiar with the abbreviation. Uh, WordPress, are people listening to podcasts about WordPress? Yeah? What about investing? Get rich quick. Usually pretty popular. What about the self help niche? Yeah? I love the self help niche. My favourite at the moment is the yoga talk show. It's a one stop shop for everything and anything you need to know about Downward Dog. So, if you're into uh, yoga, that's one for you. So, there's lots of stuff that we can listen to. But let's think about the impact that podcasts are now having on our lives. Because they're quite profound. So, for those of you who are listening to podcasts, what kind of impact have they had on your lives? Think pre-podcast life to now. Awesome. So, yeah, absolutely. So the walk and learn is just amazing. The vacuum and learn, I mean, how cool is that? Nowadays, at the tips of our fingers, we can uh, find something that we're really interested in, no matter how niche it is, and we can learn about it. So other ways that podcasts might impact our lives, um, we might join a Facebook group. Anyone here in a Facebook group? Cool. <laughs> Um, you might have met your mentor through listening to a podcast, perhaps. Some people even listen to podcasts and are so inspired that they make a career change. Has anyone here had that moment, you know, doing the vacuuming and then suddenly seeing the light? Anybody? No. Well, some of my listeners, Eric, so-so, maybe, yeah, contemplating some change? Cool. So, there's lots of reasons why we listen to podcasts. The variety is endless, they're unique, they're educative, they're inspiring, but also they're really niche. There's something for everyone. <coughs> My little guy, he's yeah, <laughs> into Sesame Street. So that's the listener experience, but then we've got the podcasters. So does anyone here host a podcast? Cool. One and a half people? <laughs> Also, maybe by the end we'll have you with a full. It's a awesome. Right, fantastic. So we've got a few in the room. So I'm wondering, for that lone person at the back there who has a podcast, are you happy to come up to the mic and have a bit of a chat with me? Sure. <laughs> Great. Round of applause for anonymous podcast host who can be known. What's your name and what's your podcast? Uh, my name is Brad Powell. And my podcast is called Awesome Video Makers. Awesome Video Makers. Yeah, I'm intrigued. So I just interview other people who make video, mm -hmm. whether they're they're you know famous commercial kind of thing, or they've just done something really cool mm -hmm. that worked. Awesome. And I just talk to them about their process and what happened. Brilliant. I tell that story. So has it been a smooth ride for you getting this podcast up? <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say there's been a major hurdle with it. Um, in the beginning, it was a lot of work. Yeah, and it continues to be a lot of work. And now it's getting a little easier. Ah, very good. Cool. So what's the best thing that's happened for you since you started this podcast? I just think it's mainly about the people I'm meeting. Like, growing my network, huge benefit. Awesome. And now's your opportunity to plug to the crowd. Where can we find your podcast? Just go to awesomevideomakers.com. Great. Cool. Thank you so much.
check out awesomevideomakers.com that everything you need to know about making awesome videos. So, there's a whole bunch of reasons why people might start a podcast. You might start it for a business reason. So, for example, you're wanting to build your reputation as an expert, for example. Or you're wanting to drive traffic to your website, so lead generation. HubSpot started the Growth Show podcast to attract customers to their software. You might start a podcast because you're passionate about a particular uh, issue or movement. So, Andrew Denton is one of the most well-known Australian journalists in the country. And his podcast, Better Off Dead, is all about euthanasia, a topic that he is passionate about. This podcast series is truly empowering and impactful and mind-blowing. So if you're interested in that or in something else, as in getting your word out there, that might be a reason that you start a podcast. You might also start a podcast because through your own life experience, you've identified a niche area. So Mums with Hustle is all about mumpreneurs. So for those mums in the audience considering starting a big Christina at the back there, whoop, whoop. <laughs> This is your one-stop shop for finding out about being a mum and how to be an entrepreneur at the same time. I'm going through this because I'm trying to reach out to everybody here. There'll be something in there for you, even if it's not on your radar yet, that may be the reason that will get you over the, uh, the hurdle to starting a podcast. So, we've got the listeners, we've got the podcasters, Oh, <laughs> one of my funnies, let's see. You might decide to start a podcast because you think you're a bit of a stand-up comedian. Anyone in the room think they're a bit funny? <laughs> so now it's your opportunity to practice some of your material beyond the family dinner table. So we've got the listeners, we've got the podcasters, we've also got the guests. Has anyone here been a guest on a podcast? Yeah, a few people? Awesome. It's a great way to get your word out there. So this example, Tim Ferriss was a guest on Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income podcast. And this was great. Tim gets in front of Pat's audience and Tim brings his audience to Pat's audience. Does that make sense? Bit of a riddle, but you get my drift. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why someone might want to be a guest on a show. Again, it could be a business reason. Uh, you might be wanting to appear as an expert to increase your credibility, to drive traffic to your website. You might want to build connections, or you might want to spread the word on an area you're passionate about, like Andrew Denton did. This is a recent episode on my podcast. This is Dr. Kelsey Latimer. She is uh, the lead psychiatrist at the Center for Pediatric Eating Disorders in Texas. She is incredibly passionate about this area and she's also doing a lot of work with the media. So she actually approached me and suggested that we do a bit of an interview because she wants to attract early career psychologists to this very niche area, paediatric eating disorders. This was also part of a bigger media strategy for uh, the Children's Hospital in Texas. So during our interview, she actually had her media strategist sitting in the room listening to the interview. So it can be about a broader media strategy as well. There's a whole bunch of other reasons why people might want to be a guest. It's an opportunity to get to talk about yourself. People like that, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eric? <laughs> Um, so you get to talk about yourself, but you get to reflect on what it is you do and you know, and you might never have done this before in a succinct way, which communicates well to your audience. So that's a really special um, opportunity. For psychologists, we're really good at asking the questions, but we're not so good at answering them. And when we are asked the questions, we avoid them at all costs. So what my listeners have been saying to me is it's been amazing to actually hear psychologists talk about their personal stories. And for them, they've really enjoyed the opportunity to get to reflect on what it is that they do. So the podcasting platform is truly democratic, which coincidentally is consistent with the WordPress objective of democratising publishing. I'm an example of this. I'm a bit of a tech numpty. 
And I've managed to create a successful podcast with over 50,000 downloads since I launched about a year ago because WordPress made it really easy for me. And for those of you who don't know what a numpty is, yeah. <laughs> this is my preferred option. I should say I said a tech numpty, not a numpty in all fronts. I'm quite good at my job, I think. <laughs> so, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about how I went from being a passive podcast listener to an active podcast producer and host. This has allowed me to travel from Melbourne, Australia to Boston, Massachusetts, halfway across the globe, to talk to you guys about something that I'm passionate about. And in a few days' time, it will take me one hour north of San Francisco to Petaluma to meet my podcasting idol. But more importantly, hopefully I will inspire you to do the same, particularly those people before that were like, mm, maybe, sort of, I've been thinking about it. Now, before we dive in, the two biggest problems with podcasting are knowing where to start, so actually getting that thing launched, and then keeping the momentum up once you've got it going. This has absolutely been my experience. Now, I can hear you thinking, and we psychologists are pretty good at that, <laughs> but there's so many other problems, Amy. I need to have awesome performance skills to be interesting as a host. I need to have great connections so I can get cool guests. I need to have lots of fancy equipment that's really expensive money, which I just don't have. And to be credible, for people to actually want to listen to me, I've got to be an expert in my field, which I'm not. If you're thinking any of this right now, just know you're not alone and that it's not true. So let's just park all of that stuff going around in there right now and dive on in. So just briefly, I'm a clinical psychologist and my podcast is called We All Wear It Differently. It aims to inform, motivate and inspire early career psychologists through interviews with those who have come before them. So I chat to psychologists from all different backgrounds, forensic, sport, organisational, refugees, family therapy, psychosis, you name it, I've done it. We psychologists do it. I get them to share their personal and their professional journeys, as well as their advice and self-care tips. It's basically the stuff that me and my mates were wishing we were listening to while we were at uni. So in order to tell the story of how I started and maintained a successful podcast, I'm gonna borrow a model from my area, which is called the Stages of Change model. Is anyone familiar with this? Show of hands. A couple of people. Cool. So, the stages of change are this. Pre-contemplation. Contemplation. There's a few of you in here. Preparation. Action. Maintenance. And relapse. So the stages of change model helps us make sense of the change process. So the critical assumption is that behavioural change doesn't just happen in one easy step. It happens through a series of distinct and predictable stages. So just realising the stage of change that you're in at any given time may be helpful enough to give you the motivation to move forwards into the next stage and really start to take meaningful action, like it did for me. So, like I said, this model is from psychology. It was initially, initially from the addiction space, but these days it can be used to understand any kind of behavioural change. So if anyone here who has ever dieted or um, tried to engage in a new exercise regime, you might have been through some of these stages. So, the first stage, pre-contemplation. Here you're unaware that you have a problem or that there's something that needs to change. Ignorance is bliss. So for me at this stage, I was a dedicated podcast listener, and yes, I had some celebrity podcast crushes at the time. Does anyone know this guy? No? Okay. Does anyone have a celebrity podcast crush? Put your hands up. Oh, yes. So, are you willing to reveal all? Besides this guy. Oh, my husband. <laughs> Oh, no, awesome. <laughs> yeah, 
So, so Troy Dean from WP Elevation is your um, podcast crush, business <laughs> podcast crush. We'll make it, you know, above board. Awesome. So basically, in free contemplation, I was enjoying listening to podcasts, but the idea of having one just wasn't even on my radar. The next stage is contemplation. So here you're thinking about change, or you've identified a problem, or in this case, something that you want that you don't have yet. You start weighing up the pros and cons, so it's now on your radar. So for me, I was running around the lake one day listening to a podcast, and I suddenly had this amazing idea. Hey, maybe I could start a podcast. Wow, cool. Now I'm in contemplation. So I know there are a few people who put their hands up before to say they've also been thinking about starting a podcast. So you are now in contemplation too. So contemplation for me looked like this. I knew I had something to say. I wanted greater reach. I actually imagined this and it felt really good, but I just didn't know what to talk about. I felt confident um, because I recently well, I've become a professional. I was a psychologist now. That gave me credibility, right? But I wasn't an expert in any particular area. So who would want to listen or trust what I had to say? I could go on and on about contemplation, but the biggest challenge for me in this phase was definitely my ego. Sure, I really wanted to do this, and deep down I thought, people are interested in psychology. I also actually thought, you know, I think I could be pretty good at this. But what if I made mistakes? Like in the public, like on the internet, like out there forever. Embarrassing, right? I mean, my career could just like, yeah. So I was dancing in contemplation for a really long time. And for those of you who are in contemplation right now, you know who you are. Be aware that you can stay here for years, okay? So don't get stuck. Use it to motivate change. My excuses were growing thinner by the day. And thankfully, the conversation in my head started to change. It went from, oh my God, don't make a mistake, nobody else has ever failed in the world, and if you do, your life is over, to, Amy, you're in the podcast revolution. Your hubby's doing it. Your osteopath is doing it. The 12-year-old boy next door is doing it. No joke, 12-year-olds around the country are doing it. So, I decided I was going to do it too. And to make it real, I rang my mum and said, hey mum, I'm going to start a podcast. And she said, that is so great, darling, what on? So I took a holiday to reflect because I wasn't quite sure yet. So now I've entered preparation phase. So here you're preparing to make a change. You start planning. You might buy a course or make an appointment with somebody, maybe a mentor. Basically, you're asking yourself, well, what do I need to do to make this happen? On that holiday, I did some soul searching and I realized I need to figure out my why. Up until this point, I knew I wanted to start a podcast because I wanted to start a podcast, but I didn't know why. And that certainly wasn't going to be enough to sustain it. Then I realized, I want to start a podcast that I would want to listen to. The perfect podcast for someone like me. There was nothing out there for early career psychologists. And no joke, this is the hardest stage in our career. And there was my why, a podcast for early career psychologists. Then I went on to define my show, my target audience, and I was truly preparing. So my first big takeaway is this. Figure out your why and write it down. It will likely change, but the sentiment won't. This is your rock to always come back to. And make that appointment. Once you've made your appointment, tell other people that matter. Your mentor, supervisor, family, people who will hold you accountable if you ask them to. And hey, share your why with them, because now it's bigger than you are. So now we enter action. This is where all the really big stuff happens. It's about making changes and acting on the decisions that you made in preparation stage. You're essentially making shit happen. Or as Seth Godin says, you're shipping. So for me, one of my first big actions 
was setting up a landing page with a date. This is obviously not my landing page, but you get the drift. There's a timer, there's a date. The clock is ticking, this is real. My second biggest tip. One of the hardest things that I've only just thought of now for people starting a podcast is actually talking into a microphone and then having to listen to yourself back. Like, has anyone here done that before and enjoyed the experience? <laughs> yeah, it's like totally awkward. So, record a test episode with a friend and agree to never publish it. I did this and to this day I've never published it. So it gave me an opportunity to dance in this uncomfortable space and to build the confidence to do my first real interview. More action soon, but now for my favourite part of the model. Ah, maintenance. Now we've taken enough actions that things are rolling smoothly and we're just settling into the maintenance stage. So this is about maintaining new actions, maintaining changes. Some theorists believe that once you hit maintenance, you need to stay here forever. Others think you need to be in maintenance for about 12 to 18 months to really um, assure yourself that you've actually made a change. I tend to agree with both. So for me, it's about maintaining the podcast. It's tech upkeep. It's publishing. It's booking interviews. It's maintaining contact with listeners. And just as things were going so well in maintenance, Welcome relapse. Just when you thought everything was smooth, at any time you need to know we're vulnerable to relapse. Or lapse. So relapse is a complete return to your old ways. So essentially that would be like going off the air. Or a lapse is like just a little blip in the radar, but then you quickly get back into action. You're most vulnerable to, and for ease I'll just refer to them all as relapse. So you're most vulnerable to relapse in the action phase. And think about it, it makes sense. Because you're doing new behaviours, things that are new to you, they're not ingrained. And it's not easy to start new behaviours. So, you need to be aware that you're, aware, sorry, that you're vulnerable there. You're also vulnerable in maintenance phase as well. So just a little tip, always be checking in with yourself. Ask yourself, how am I going? Am I enjoying the process? Is this sustainable? And if not, why not? That will really help you stay out of relapse. My first relapse. I essentially just stopped taking action before I was even on the air. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you know that little clock that I showed you before? Yeah, so you can move the timer forward if you want to. <laughs> so I did this a few times. I kept moving the date forward. I was nervous. I was busy. I just probably wasn't quite ready. My mum even said to me, hey, you know that podcast thing you've been talking about? Well, if it's stressing you out, you don't have to do it, you know. The truth was, of course, it was just fear holding me back. I just needed a little bit of motivation to get myself back into action. So my next big tip. Once you've locked down your launch date, publicly announce it. Let people know you're launching it. And I mean beyond family, I mean beyond your mentor, I mean like your network, your business network. Get it out there because once you do this, you'll make it happen. And this absolutely catapulted me back into action. So the stages of change in a nutshell. Well, first you need to know that, yeah, change doesn't just happen in one step. There's a series of distinct st stages. To keep it simple, the big challenges are getting from contemplation into action. Remember, I said you can stay in contemplation for years and years, so we need to be really aware of this. And once you've arrived in maintenance, staying there, because this is where you want to be most of the time. And of course, we want to avoid relapse as much as we can. So, how to get into action, how to stay in maintenance, and how to avoid relapse. So I've broken this up into three P's, and the first P is planning. Always have, sorry, off mic there. Always have three episodes in the can. So if you take a holiday or you get sick, you've got some up your sleeve. 
I could be better at this and it gets really stressful and I end up cramming a lot and I become really vulnerable to relapse. Always be inviting guests. So I use a Trello board and I think Nicole was talking about this earlier in her talk. So how it works, you put people in contact, you move them to interview booked, interview done, and woohoo, interview published, yes. <laughs> Another great way to avoid relapse. Send your questions to your guests in advance. So this prevents dead air, which is terrible for listeners. And it also gives your guests an opportunity to think about their questions and to let you know if there are things they just don't want to talk about. So in psychology in particular, this is kind of important. Recently, I sent a woman uh, some questions and 10 minutes before the interview, she came back with, hey, like 90% of the things you're asking me, I'm just a bit worried ethically about those things, so do you mind if we just avoid those things? And that was like, everything I wanted to talk to her about, of course. <laughs> so at least I got 10 minutes to kind of get over that little shock and, and get prepared. But if I'd had no minutes, that would have been really stressful and I reckon the episode would have been a bit of a, bit of a failure. Publishing. Asks your guests who they want to hear interviewed. So this is a really cool way to keep growing your Trello board and you also have an in with a guest, which is also really cool. Set up a recording template with openers and closers. So I use GarageBand, but you can use whatever you want. Then I record a Skype call with Ecamm uh, call recorder on the Mac. If you use a PC, you can use Pamela. And I just drag the recording straight into my template for super quick editing. It's really great and simple. Ooh. And don't edit. So occasionally you'll have to edit, of course. A guest might make a request that you take something out and there might be some really embarrassing audio. However, don't trawl through the podcast editing out silences and moments where you think you sounded a little bit stupid. If you are perfectionistic or self-critical in any way, you will lose hours of your life here and start to resent your podcast. In fact, you might start to hate your podcast. That's what happened to me. So, it's funny because my listeners actually have surprisingly really enjoyed hearing my little dog scratching in the background, you know, and you start to hear the ching, ching, ching on her um, collar. <laughs> it humanises me and it reminds them that I'm in my lounge room at home doing this. And the final P, promoting. So find listeners through associations. So for example, I approach lots of universities um, and talk to their psychology departments. Invite guests with established audience, with established audiences. Oh yeah, this guy. Does everyone remember him? Oh, you should do. It's because I put him up a while ago. No. Oh, for a Yeah, he's a he's an handsome guy. So this is my podcast idol crush. Um, this is Dr. Dave and his podcast is Shrink Rap Radio and it's like the most popular psychology, anything you need to know about mental health podcast on the air. He actually started in 2005 and has done over 500 episodes. Like 2005, did anyone know what a podcast was back then? A few of you, but you guys are all ahead of the curve, you guys are like tech people. Um, <laughs> He is like a total pioneer, and he absolutely was my inspiration for starting this podcast. So, of course, Dr. Dave was going to be a great person for me to talk to, to expand my listenership. And I did talk to him, and I blushed a lot, but it was really worthwhile, and I absolutely saw my numbers increase. Also, Pretty Link Light plugin. So this allows me to announce the episode with a short link. For example, we all wear it differently, dot com forward slash Dr. Dave. So it's just really easy for my listeners when they're listening to an episode to know exactly how to get to my WordPress blog to access the show notes. So like I said, I've had over 50,000 downloads since I launched um, a bit over a year ago. And I've barely done any marketing. So the reason that I'm admitting that to you and that I'm putting this up here is because all these simple little things that I'm telling you can actually have quite an impact. And this is important too. Relapse is okay. Now, I know I said before you want to try to avoid it. 
and you do, but it's also an inevitable stage of change. Like I said before, if you've ever dieted, if you've ever tried to start going to the gym, you've probably been through this phase. The cool thing is that over time, each time you go into relapse or lapse, the lapse gets shorter and less intense, okay? And the other cool thing is you kind of strengthen your muscle, you know, how can I get back into action? So you're essentially strengthening your motivation muscle. So that's really cool too. So I'm going to tell you about my second relapse because it kind of exemplifies how a relapse can actually have a positive impact and it also comes under promotion. So I just launched and it was like the honeymoon phase. I was number three in the iTunes store after This American Life and TED Talks. Yeah, like I was up there, that was really cool. So this lasted a week. I was in New and Noteworthy for about six weeks. That was also pretty cool. And I was ranking number three for psychology podcasts for quite a while. In fact, I'm probably still up there. What I'm saying to you guys is initially when I launched, I was on a massive high. And of course, what goes up must come down. It was a lot of hard work. And as time went on, I started wondering, you know, how I'm going to sustain this. I was putting so much out there, but what was I getting back? I actually started to resent my podcast. I became really vulnerable to relapse. It was sunny, it was a Sunday, and I was at home editing. Not fun. So I decided to take a break up, um, around Christmas time, and initially it was planned for two weeks. It turned into three, then four, and then my lovely husband Troy said to me, so are you gonna like keep doing this podcast thing or what? Like we've put in a lot of work here, because he's the tech guy, of course. I did want to keep doing it, so I had to just stop, reflect on where I was in the model, and ask myself, what's missing? Something wasn't working for me. I was in my maintenance stage, but it wasn't being sustained. I was putting in a lot of effort, and it was all going out to the ether. I kind of felt like this guy. I was floating in space, screaming, and no one was listening. It's kind of eerie, actually. You know, you want to know that people are enjoying what you're doing and you want to know you're having an impact. I'm a human being and I needed positive reinforcement too. I needed to make contact with my listeners, so I built a community. I did this through Facebook. I now have over 650 um, members. And things I do to maintain and increase engagement are regular posts. So on Monday, we have Mindful Monday. People set their intention. On Tuesdays, we have Tribal Tuesday, so that's an opportunity to network with other people in your niche. And on Fridays, we have Self Care Friday. Now, self care, is, self care is like a core part of what we do as psychologists. So people get an opportunity to say what they're doing, but also if they're struggling with it, why? And we see if we can help them. Another way uh, I'm trying to increase engagement is a Q&A session with Moshe Lang. Moshe Lang is the, uh, the most probably well-known family therapist in Australia. I did an episode with him about a month ago. We've become really great friends, and now we do a Q&A session on Mondays. So my listeners writing questions to me, I put them to Mosh, and we publish, publish them. So importantly, taking these steps got me out of relapse, back into action, and then into maintenance. I felt sustained. That's all I needed. So if we think about maintenance and what's going to keep us sustained, keep us kind of rolling along smoothly, here are some power tips about technology that I use that makes it easy. So I use Smart Podcast Player by Pat Flynn. So you can go onto my WordPress blog and you can listen to the podcast there. I use Libsyn to host the actual audio files, to track analytics on downloads, and this also allows me to get the podcast ready for iTunes. I use Backup Buddy and iTheme Sync for backups, and of course we all know how important daily backups are. I use, I use Gravity Forms and Real Simple Capture. So these are my contact forms so people can get in contact with me through the website, and really simple capture makes people fill in a maths question to prove that they're human. I also use Beaver Builder for building the pages. And
and opt-in monster and MailChimp for capturing email addresses into MailChimp. So, some rookie mistakes. You have a podcast and you do no marketing. We need feedback to be sustained. I've experienced this. You're not just doing this for kicks, you want people to listen. Five minutes, thank you. Being too hard on yourself too early. Your first interviews will almost certainly be average, if not below average. To this day, I actually can't listen back to mine, so don't torture yourself, just keep on moving forwards. You don't need amazing tech equipment to do a podcast, but you do need really good quality audio. So there's no point having great content if people just can't listen to it. The good news is you can get really cheap mics now that are great quality. And it's not about whether you like the podcast. I mean, it is. Obviously, you have to like it to an extent. But if you're unsure, ask the audience what they think. Trust them, because they're the most important um, people on this journey with you. So next steps. Uh, hello, my old friend. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to go through the cycle again. I just want to say or make an admission to make myself accountable. I've been in contemplation about active marketing and sponsorship for a really long time. Like literally about four months ago, I wrote a package. Up until this point, nobody has seen it. So I booked a holiday to Boston to reflect. And I'm definitely feeling more energized. I'm aware of where I am in the model and I'm ready to go home and take serious action in this area. So I guess ultimately for me, the next stage is about building my listenership, getting sponsorship, and making sure that my podcast is sustainable so I can keep providing great content for my listeners and getting it out there. So just some closing thoughts. We're all experts in something, even if it's being an expert in not being an expert. Pretty cool, huh? WordPress makes this stuff really easy for nupties. Change doesn't just happen in one step. So know where you are in your stage of change, be aware of this, and use it to motivate action. Don't live your life in contemplation. And finally, WordPress set out to democratise publishing. And podcasting is one way that you can have a voice and share it with the world, one listener at a time. So, wear it differently and stay passionate. Thank you. <laughs> Two minutes if anyone's got any questions. Yeah? Oh, okay, cool. So essentially, you've taken new actions. So you're changing behavior. So this is new to you. You've taken a whole bunch of new actions, and now they've sort of settled. So it's like, it's like you've uh, just taken up a gym membership, and um, at the beginning, for like the first few months, it's really, really difficult. Yeah, you've got to talk yourself into it every morning. Eventually, you just get into the routine, and you start going. It becomes a lifestyle choice, right? So that's kind of maintenance. You've taken the big actions, now everything just settles. It's smooth, it's rolling, you're using your power tips, like the technology tips, all those sorts of things. So just to keep it rolling smoothly. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Any other questions? Do you have a release form for your guests? Oh, good question. Do I have a release form for my guests? I don't. And no one's ever asked. Which is odd because we usually ask every client we see to sign some form of a consent. So, yeah, I'm sure, um, yeah, no, so far it hasn't been an issue. Yeah. Yes? How did you get up the gumption to get your first interview? How did I get up the gumption to get my first interviews? I guess I was just so aware of the stage of change that I was in. Um, and I didn't want to live my life in contemplation. You know, it gets tiring. And I really did think about it, you know, everybody was doing it. 
Uh, it was just fear holding me back. And it was literally like, type the email and press click. Like, literally it was like that, you know, it was just pushing myself to take action. And the cool thing is we don't have to call people anymore. We can actually just do it by email. So how easy is that? First off, so I started safe. So the question was, who did I choose to start off with? And I started off with people that I knew. So I stayed safe. But then probably about four or five, I just started emailing around. And what I learned was people really like talking about themselves. So they're not just doing something for you you're actually doing something for them too. So that's something to keep in mind when you get nervous about sending those emails. You know, that person might get your email on that day and be like, oh my God, awesome, I've always wanted to be a guest. Yeah? Cool, does that answer your question? And now I'm wrapping it up, so thank you everybody for coming and listening and hopefully you've been inspired to start your own podcast. If not now, one day. Thank you.